So welcome everyone to the 100 pounder special focus meeting of Overeaters Anonymous. Today is August the 10th, 2022, and I'm delighted to welcome Tammy M as our speaker. Tammy uh, came to OA in 2016 and is from Arlington Heights in Illinois. Tammy, um, you, you, over to you. We'd love to hear from you. We can't wait. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. I'm going to start out by sharing some pictures. So the one right here, uh, where did it go? Hello? So the one on the left is my baby picture. And I was about 11 pounds. You can see my round neck. And my parents always said I was a big baby, um, you can tell right there. The next one over right there is my, um, I was at 25, I stood up at my uh, girlfriend's best friend's wedding. The one below that is I was in, at my grandparents, I was in high school. And the one next to that, below my baby picture, I was at my highest weight um, in 2003. I was 586 pounds. Um, and I had gone into respiratory failure. So I'll start out with my story. Um, how do I get back to, okay. So I am a grateful recovered compulsive overeater. And I just want to thank every one of you for being here and allowing to share my story here. My story began at the age of five years old when I was being sexually abused by my father. And I felt extremely alone with this because my family didn't believe me about this. And they thought I was lying about this my whole life. And it's interesting because I have to tell you a quick story we went to my mom's cemetery this weekend and out of the clear blue, I was unprepared for this. My brother asked me as we were reminiscing about my mother, if I really was sexually my father. And I was to ask that question and I spoke my truth from the heart and by God, and I said, yes. And he, he said, I'm truly sorry that happened to you and his wife too. And whether my sister believed me or not, I didn't care, but they said, I'm truly sorry that happened. And at least I got some validation. Um, I also was abused on my father's side by my uncle and my grandfather, which my family did believe. And I was emotionally abused by my mother too. So neither parent was perfect. All this abuse caused me to feel feelings of isolation, loneliness, distrust, among other emotions. I just wanted to hide, but food became my friend to cover up the emotions that I did not want to feel. And this is the time my eating disorder began. Um, my parents' marriage was very volatile growing up, and it was very scary for me because I witnessed so many of their physical fights that I would run up to the top of the stairs and just cry. Um, I would witness flying chairs, and it was just too much for me. I also kept hearing from my father and siblings how they hated my mom and I had a very close relationship and they hated how close we were. So I compensated for that by overeating, purging and restricting. I also was in the middle of my parents' fights growing up. And an example of that was I jumped in the middle of um, their fight and I almost got hit 
by my father when I uh, protected my mom. In third grade, I was tested for a learning disability and I found out that I had one. So I was put in special education classes until the end of eighth grade and the kids in grade school were so cruel to me. It's unbelievable how kids could be at a young age. They made me do things I did not want to do and I could tell not one single soul. I still hid it from my family until this day. So they also made fun of me because I was slower than them because of my learning disability and they thought I was overweight. Because of their cruelty, I found myself using food more often to cope. When I was attending college between the years of 1986 and 1992, um, I went to an OA meeting and I came back and called my therapist who I was seeing at the time. And I expressed to her that I felt I needed more help. So the next day I dropped out of school and I went into a uh, eating disorder unit for my eating disorder. Um, I went in for binge eating and my bulimia. And I went in for two weeks. Um, it, helped, um, it helped me a little, um, but I was the same when I came out. <laughs> I never had one stable therapeutic relationship. Um, because my father would threaten every single therapist unless they did it his way. My father and I never had a close relationship um, because of my addiction and because of me accusing him of sexually abusing me. It was sad. Um, at 400 pounds, I had a lot of trouble fitting into my clothes. I remember sitting on a chair and it broke and my father hitting me in the face. When that happened, I was literally in shock and no one had said a word in my family. And that made me feel really unprotected. So eventually in my mid 30, my parents eventually got divorced, which probably was the best thing um, because my mom was getting emotionally abused. And once again, I turned to food to deal with the, all the pain that came from the court case because I didn't want to feel anything. It was so painful. I was part of the court case and made to testify by my father and his team of lawyers. And it threw me into flashbacks. Um, also was my therapist made to testify who I was seeing at the time, and I had no one to turn to in my family either. So I used binge eating to cope with my feelings of feeling scared, confused, and vulnerable. I mean, I didn't want to get up on the stand, but I was made to. Um, none of my siblings were either. So after the divorce, my mom and I ended up moving in together and I was going to move into independent living facility, but once again, my mother talked me out of it. Um, she became dependent on me to be her caregiver. And while I was living with my mom, she became extremely emotionally abusive to me by swearing at me. If I, don't, if I didn't go get her cigarettes or if I didn't go get her fast food to eat, she would swear at me. Um, I felt deeply hurt by this and I felt like I could not speak up to my mother. I was scared. I was 36 year years old while living with her and my weight kept getting higher and higher. Um, at the house of my mother's, we had a big scale um, 
And when I stepped on the scale, it was a huge bariatric scale, which is the only scale we could find. I stepped on it and my weight had topped 586 pounds. Reality had finally hit me that I could not drive anymore. My feet had swelled up to the point that I could not wear my gym shoes and I had absolutely no clothes that fit me. I was basically housebound and I wanted to die. I was suicidal, yet I was still caring for my mom. Between my mother and I, we both kept falling and I had to call the fire department on multiple occasions to come pick us both up. Um, and my mother would keep smoking and I would just keep staying awake to make sure she wouldn't set the house on fire. Um, so on to like one day my siblings came over to talk with me and my mom and they had to, decided that it was best that I go into a nursing home, my first nursing home for morbid obesity. So relentlessly I went. Um, and after the second day of being there and not remembering much of being in the nursing home, my brother came to visit me and he had found me unresponsive in the bath on the toilet in the bathroom, which was scary for him. And the nurse rushed to call the ambulance and they took me to the closest hospital where I woke up in ICU the next morning with a tracheostomy and tubes in me. And I felt scared with all these people around me thinking I was gonna die or something. But God had saved me for a reason. I didn't know what was happening with all these people around me. Um, after a few weeks in IC, the IC unit, I got transferred to a nursing home in Des Plaines, Illinois, where my doctor was. And I lived there for three years. And so I lost weight there by pushing the wheelchair around the nurse's station every day. And the truth is all I wanted to do was lay in bed at my weight, at my highest weight. But the therapist who I was seeing said, no, you're gonna get out of bed and push that wheelchair. So I did, I got dressed and I got out of bed and I pushed that wheelchair something still wasn't working because I wasn't honest about the vending machine. And um, I had to be honest because that was the only way I was gonna begin recovery. Until I could become honest with myself and others, I could not try to start recovery. So after I became honest with my doctor and my therapist, I walked and walked around the nurse's station and pushed that wheelchair. And that was the end of the vending machines for me. Um, the weight dropped. Um, I believe I got down to 313. Um, after three years of staying at the nursing home, I ended up in multiple nursing homes before ending up at that Shelley nursing home and got my um, I got physical therapy there, and I also um, found my own apartment, and I started OA meetings, and I found my first sponsor and got abstinent the first time on July 1st of 2016. Um, <clears throat> so... In the meantime, a lot has happened like in between. I had to step away from program for personal reasons. My mom had passed away in 2016. We just went to see her six year anniversary is coming up in September. Her birthday was August 5th. We just went to see the cemetery, her, um, her at the cemetery. And in the past, 
I would have not been able to handle it, but you know what? I handled it just fine. I didn't eat over it. I didn't, it was like, I handled it just fine. Um, I know she's watching down over me and she'd be proud of me today. Um, and I got kicked out of my old apartment because of my old landlord, he refused to fix a defective sink and a shower head. And I ended up in two nursing home, uh, homes before now meeting my goal, now of living where I am now in my own apartment since February of 2022. Um, I have a wonderful new sponsor and I got um, I did get an abstinent on um, July of 2021, and today I have 12 months and 23 days today. Um, and this is how I really live in the steps today. Um, I get up every morning and I pray. I, re I pray before breakfast and I pray after breakfast and I read a bunch of meditation books. And if I have a 10 step, I will um, text it. I will call my sponsor with that or call somebody with um, my 10 step. And at night I will email my sponsor my um, 11 step. Um, and I just joined, glad to say, my temple choir last night, which is fabulous. Um, every other night, I will either attend a Scottsdale big book meeting or, and, or my Friday night temple services and connect to God wonderfully. Um, I love it. Um, I'm basically working in the action program. Uh, I realize that this program has changed me and brought me close, really close to God. Every day I keep God with me. Um, and I surrender to God multiple times a day. Um, let's see. Um, I have realized that this illness is illness is of the mind and not of the body. I've been extremely stressed and not used foods at all to deal with my emotions. And I have been turning to God more and more. So if this illness was just with food, then a diet would have solved my problems a long time ago. I found that I had to turn my problems over to God through the big book of alcoholics and I'm anonymous and find a spiritual fit way of living just for me. I found eight, I ate out of human emotions, whether I was happy, sad, angry, or lonely. I also found that food stopped working for me. Um, it just did. And I had to work the steps precisely as they were written in the big book. Um, so I would like to share a couple of things I have learned from the OA program. I have found that by doing service and carrying the message has really gotten me out of my head and helping people surrendering people. Surrendering to God has been the most important thing in my life because before I could work the steps, I had to surrender my life over to God. And I was reading a passage out of Voices of Recovery yesterday by Overeaters Anonymous, and I just want to share that if I could. Um, it says, those of us who live this program don't simply carry the message, we are the message. I don't just work the program, I live it. That means I try to incorporate all 12 steps into my daily life. After practicing for many years, the practice has become a habit. 
The more habitual it comes, the easier it is to live the program. It becomes second nature. I don't have to think about it. That means I am a message of recovery. For those who still suffer, I live this program for me, for my peace of mind, and for my sanity. That I am a message for others is a gift from God. I am an example that keep coming back works. And I just want to say for any newcomer that's here that this program works, it's a miracle. And this is how I live the steps and, and work my action program right here. It says it all right here. And it becomes, it does, it's easier to live the program uh, it's like second nature. I don't have to think about it anymore. Um, I just do it because it's a habit now. It's a habit now. And um, so that's really all I have to share. And I just want to thank you for allowing me to share my story here with you today, this morning. And I am a recovered compulsive overeater. I am an available sponsor. And I also take 10 steps in our reach cause and I could leave my number in the chat. Thank you for allowing me to share.